the drop and loop fishing knot or the blood knot dropper. Depending on where you get your information from, that's what I found this knot to be. It's actually a fishing knot and it's designed for putting the loop, a loop into the bite of a rope. Um, now I did see this the other day and I did ask the question but nobody could answer this but anybody who's into fishing and maybe rock climbing as well, could you please tell me if this one is preferable to say for example the Alpine butterfly loop is one more secure than the other, why is this one preferred within the fishing fraternity as opposed to the Alpine butterfly knot? Uh, but butterfly loop, I'm sorry. Okay, so anyway, without further ado, let me show you how to tie this one. So let's get knotting. So I originally got this knot from a little book I've got. It's called Fisherman's Knots and Wrinkles. Not sure what a wrinkle is. I've got a good idea what a wrinkle is, but then that's in my face as opposed to anywhere else. Um, but the actual knot we're going to be looking at is in here it's known as the blood knot dropper and there's a picture of it and I also know it as the dropper loop fishing knot. So here we have it, I've got my pretend fishing line here, obviously a lot thicker but it does certainly makes it easier for you to see how to tie the dropper loop and the first thing I do is all I do is get hold of it and just twist, so there's my line, get hold of it in the middle, twist it like so, so that we end up with a loop like so. And you can see now I've got a loop coming here like that. Now what we do is where the two lines cross over like that, that's our crossing point. There's two ways of tying this. I'll show you both ways. The first way that I learned was that what we do is we get hold of both lines like so and we just twist it in our hands. Just keep twisting nice and even, nice and straight and do about four turns on that. And then once we've got four turns, You'll see I've got turns on either side of my loop there and the next thing I do is this part of the cordage that we hadn't touched before, we now take that and pass it down through that loop that we've got there, take it down through that loop and then just gently pull up. And you can see here now, as I pull up, I'm just going to gently pull it up together, nice and tight. Normally when you do it, that piece goes in your mouth and you pull on those two pieces there. But because I'm trying to do it in front of the camera, there's not much point in me trying to show you that. And you can then see that as I show the loop here, we've got in a sense the blood knots appearing on here. Now, according to the book, you're supposed to twist it to 10 times, but I've tried it 10 times with thick rope and it just doesn't work. So if you're using it with fishing line, you want to, it says 10 times, but when I look at it online, people usually do it about four or five times, those twists. But you can see here now, we've got sort of similar to a blood knot, a Prusik knot, also looks a little bit like the Alpine butterfly knot. Um, and so in a sense, we've now, not in a sense, but we have actually created a loop in our fishing line like so. So let me just undo this and just show you another way of doing it. So there we go. We've got our cordage like so, and just like at the very beginning, just make a loop in it like so. So we've got a loop, and you can see it's crossing there like that. Now, last time I twisted at this point here, but what I can do this time is, I just basically take my loop, and I just keep passing it over, around. Pass it over and around. We're just doing the opposite of what we did at the bottom end and then take it round four times, three or four times and then pass it through that center piece like so and there we have it, we've started to see our loop appear. And so there we go and once again pull that up nice and tight and there we have it, we have another loop in the bite of our fishing line. So there we go, that is the dropper loop as I've just recently learned. So if you can tell me why this knot amongst fishermen is preferable to say, for example, the Alpine butterfly loop, I'm sure it's just as easy to tie in filament, but I don't have any available. So if someone in the comments can tell me how and why this may be better, or maybe it's not, maybe it's just particular to fishermen. They enjoy using this particular knot. But that is the dropper loop 
And so if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a thumbs down. But please do leave me a comment and tell me why. Okay, catch you next time. Bye-bye.